Today's crochet along is brought to you by Bandit. Okay, so are you guys ready today? I'm not ready. I, uh, I do these things on the fly, impulsively, by the seat of my pants. I am not ready for today. Our today being the beginning of our spider stitch crochet along, right? Um, so remember, <laughs> I'm not exactly a tutorial channel just yet. So it'll be a couple weeks before I turn the camera around and show you how to do the stitch. You have to have some kind of basic knowledge of crocheting in order to do this, right? All right. So I have since figured out the error in my pattern. It is not a multiple of a certain number. It's just an odd number. So we are doing this based on my pink and white spider stitch blanket. And I will link that one down in the comments below. Okay. All right. So grab your hook. I'm using an eye, which is a 5.5 millimeter. Grab your yarn. I'm using a number four medium weight and I'm starting with my darkest pink color. We're going to chain an odd number. Now I want this blanket to be just as wide as my pink and white one and that chain was 151. Okay. If you need it a little smaller, just pick an odd number. 133, 145, 167. Okay. And it should work. Right. If it doesn't work, let me know down in the comments below. Okay. Because I love it when people tell me it doesn't work. <laughs> Okay, now I have to get myself comfortable. See, they're sitting for the camera and then they're sitting for crocheting. And they are not the same thing. <laughs> All right, there we go. Can you see that? Okay. Now I'm going to count. So if you're counting, just mute me. I love being muted. Mute it so you can count your own, okay? I'm up to number three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-five. Thirty, forty. Okay, that's number fifty. Now, a little trick you can do if you lose count making a really long chain, okay. Every ten stitches put in a stitch marker. So then when you go back and count it, you can go ten. 20, 30, 40, 50. It's easier to keep track of your stitches that way. Um, you can do it, especially if it's a really long one. Like I have a temperature blanket I did. It was over 300 chains long. You can do it every 25, okay? So you can go 25, 50, 75, 100. Um, if you're somebody like me who doesn't like to fiddle with the stitch markers in the chain, crochet your chain up to the number you're supposed to get. Put your hook down. Go back and start at the beginning and count it all over again. And that's what I'm doing today. Once I get to 151, I'm going to stop and I'm going to count it again. Okay. So that was stitch number, uh, chain number 100 for me. 51 to go.
150 and 151 okay all right now I'm gonna pull up a nice big long loop take my hook out and now I'm gonna go back to the beginning and I'm gonna count these again okay because I do not want to do my first row and get to the end and find out that my count was off because I don't know how to count And it's because I have to talk to you at the same time and I just want to make sure that I've got it right. Because I don't want you guys to see me cry when I get it wrong. Okay, that is 100. I got it right! 151! Woohoo! I can multitask! How'd you guys do? Did you get it right? Did you unmute me yet? <laughs> Alright, so um for most of my patterns i do not go straight into the pattern i like to do row one of all single crochets because i like a nice solid foundation to start my pattern so that is what we are doing this first row is just all single crochets so that is chain number 151 right underneath my hook right i'm going to chain two more you'll be like why isn't it 153 because this these two chains is a turning chain and i never use that as a stitch for the spider stitch blanket so i am holding chain number 151 with my thumb and i'm going to do my first single crochet in there okay and this is where you should grab a stitch marker and mark that first stitch okay which i'll do that hold on it's only so when you come back at the end of the row that you don't work into the chain two that you work into the first stitch, the first single crochet. And there we go. My chain two is right here. This is my first stitch. This is my second stitch, okay? So we're gonna do one single crochet in each chain all the way across, and our stitch count will always be 151. I right, see if I can get that camera down just a little bit for you, huh? Okay, how's that? Is that better? So there, three single crochets, four, five, six, seven, eight nine and ten there you go we're going to do this all the way across to the end all right um
All right, so that was single crochet number 50. And when I go like this, I'm just making sure that I'm being consistent with my tension and with the size and the shape of my stitches and make sure they're not too big, too loose, too tight, too small. So that's all I do. When I'm going like this, I'm just glancing at it, making sure I'm on the right track. That was number 70. Alright, that was single crochet number 100. A little bit to go. My hand's already cramping up. I haven't crocheted in weeks. I should have exercised and warmed up my hand today. Alright, almost at the end. That was chain um, single crochet 140. number 151 all right that first row worked out perfect for me and you see these stitches here get a little loose but that's okay <clears throat> all right so my camera needs to take a break for a minute and I will be right back okay so I know that is a lot of uh, quietness while I'm working but that's what it's like when you crochet you know yeah, when the kids are little and they're running around the house making lots of noise, but my kids aren't little anymore. And <laughs> because it's YouTube, I can't have the TV on in the background watching a TV show or a movie because of copyright issues. I can't turn on my stereo and listen to music because of copyright issues. <laughs> so it's very quiet on my end and it sounds quiet in the video, I know. Um, if you guys like it quiet like that so you can work on your stuff and just glance up and see what I'm doing, let me know in the comments below. If you want me to put some music in, um, free YouTube music, let me know. Okay, so we're at the end of our chain, right? Now, we're going to chain two. This chain two is not a stitch. It will not act as a stitch. You're going to turn your work, and in the first single crochet, you're going to work another single crochet. So there's going to be a single crochet that runs up the edge of the blanket, okay? And it's going to be the first stitch. At the beginning of the row, it's going to be the last stitch at the end of the row. So you're going to have single crochets running up both sides. Um, I find that the single crochet that starts the row and ends the row with the chain two, it makes it so much easier when it's time to go back and do a border or edging or trim. It gives you a nice, good, solid foundation to work into. And then if you decide that you don't want to put a border on there, that chain two 
leave some texture on the edge of the blanket. So that's why I do it like that. I kind of like it like that. And it's just kind of a thing that I do. Um, so yeah, there. <laughs> All right. So our first single crochet is done. We are going to skip the next stitch and in the next stitch. It's always the next stitch. We are skipping one and then working in the next one. You're going to do a single crochet, chain one, and a single crochet in that same stitch. And that is your first spider. Okay. You're going to skip and then work in the next stitch. You're going to do a single crochet, chain one, and a single crochet. We're going to skip, skip one, work in the next one, single crochet, chain one, single crochet. All right. We're going to do that all the way down. Skip one, work in the next, single crochet, chain one, single crochet in that same stitch. Okay. Skip, work in the next one, And you'll see it curling in a little bit. Don't worry, this works its way out. When you're 10 rows in, it will no longer be curving like this. When you're 100 rows in, it won't do that anymore. It's just, that's how it is in the beginning. Okay, so when we come back on row four, it will be a repeat of row three. This is row three, and we're gonna do this row throughout the whole blanket. Um, some people have a hard time finding that chain one space because that's what we're going to be working into. So, it's where your handy dandy stitch markers come in. All right. I have multiple sets of stitch markers and they're all around the house in multiple different projects. But well, here we go. Skip one, work in the next, do a single crochet, chain one. I'm going to show you how to put the stitch marker in there. All right, so that's a chain one on my hook. Just put this stitch marker right around that chain one. And then finish it and do a single crochet in there. And there you go. So when you come back on the next row, this is the single, this is the chain one, and you know that's what you're working into. Is it a pain to do it on each and every single spider stitch? Yes. But if it's your first time around, you might want to do that. I know that when I first started doing the spider stitch a couple years ago, I did struggle and I would tear it out and do it again, tear it out, do it again. I would get so frustrated I would cry because I kept missing the chain one space. Okay. Can I do it now without the stitch markers? Yeah, but I mean, it took me a lot of time and a lot of practice to get there. So we're going to skip, do a single crochet, chain one, single crochet, skip, single crochet, chain one, single crochet. All right. Now I'm going to stand behind the camera put my arms around like I'm hugging it and I'll show it to you from the other angle. Is that enough lighting? Can y'all see? Ooh. Okay, let's see. So there we go. I'm skipping. I'm doing a single crochet, chain one, and a single crochet. Skip single crochet, chain one, single crochet. Got it. Did I do that? Was that in frame? Oh my God. Do it one more time, make sure it's in frame. Single crochet, chain one, single crochet. Skip. Single crochet, chain one, single crochet. Oh my God, this is so hard. <laughs> I will link the video down below. Okay. I did, when I did the video from my pink and white spider stitch blanket, I did show you guys, I sat down properly <laughs> and I showed you how to do the spider stitch. I'm going to link that down below so you can go see it better. 
So for now, I'm just gonna work to the end of the row, okay? No, I'm skipping that stitch. Even I do not pay attention to what I'm doing and I forget to skip a stitch. I know it's been so quiet. So I am getting to the end and I seem to be one stitch off. <sighs> Every time. And yet when I do it with an even number, when I did it with um, 152, it was still off. So that means that somewhere along the line here, either I didn't skip a stitch or I skipped two. Am I gonna go back and fix it? Nope. Am I gonna fudge it? Yes. Yes, I am. Because I've got three stitches left and I need to have four. So this is where I actually do work into that chain two. All right, I'm gonna pause it here. I am just gonna take a real quick look and I will be right back. Okay, so it is very evident. I don't know how to count. I don't know how to create a crochet pattern and I suck at this. Yeah, um, there is a possibility that I've done this with every single spider stitch blanket I have made. So I'm at the end. I want to have two more stitches. I want to be able to skip one and then do a single crochet. I don't. Now, how in the world can I put this video up on the internet as a crochet along? I have done this so many times. I've done it just working out little samples with nine stitches, 11 stitches, 15, 17, to make sure it is an odd number. And it's been an odd number every single time. And it's worked out every single time. So why is it not working out with 151? I don't know. If I did the chain with 152, that doesn't work either. So I'm just gonna be mad. <laughs> And right here where my stitch marker is as my first single crochet, I'm putting a single crochet in there and I'm calling it done. If you guys can figure it out, let me know and I will, I will celebrate you for getting it right. So that is the end of row three. I know you guys are telling me it's so obvious that I should see it, but for whatever reason, I'm not seeing it. So at the end of the row, you chain two. You turn your work, you do a single crochet in that first single crochet, and then find your chain one space. Right there. I'm gonna do single crochet, chain one, single crochet. And we're gonna find the next chain one space in the other spider, in the next spider stitch. Single crochet, chain one, single crochet. So in each chain one space of the spider stitch in the row before, you're gonna do a single crochet, chain one, single crochet, which is the spider stitch. So I'm gonna do one more row. I'm working with my darker shade of pink. I'm gonna get to the end of this row, and then we'll go from there. Oh, guys, I don't know. I, I've I've worked this these numbers so many times off camera, and I don't know why. Half the time it works, and the other half the time it doesn't. But crochet can be very forgiving 
if you leave yourself a little bit of wiggle room uh, like I did with the chain two space and the chain one and the single crochet I did leave a little bit of room in case I messed up and for those of you who need solid numbers that aren't messed up I'm sorry I'm sorry my whole life it's just things get wonky in crocheting and I just go with it try not to stress about it too much I've also been labeled as a bull in a china shop because I will just keep plowing ahead. But I mean, already, already you can see the texture that is showing up on this, right? Oh, it's fantastic. You love it. So my question of the day is, what colors are you guys using? And have you figured out your order placement? Me with that yellow, I'm 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 thinking I'm taking that yellow out. <laughs> it's just it's not working for me. I mean I love yellow, but I have a feeling that I love yellow all on its own by itself and not mixed with other colors. So let me know down in the comments below what kind of colors are you guys using? I'm always curious as to other people's thought process and how they put their colors together. If they lay them out like I do, use a piece of paper, use um, tools on the internet to figure out where you're going to put your colors. So this, this row, this pattern, it just repeats for the whole length or body of the blanket, okay? You don't have to do any more thinking or counting after this. Although every now and then, every 10th row, just stretch it out, put it out on your lap, and make sure that you are still straight on the edges, and that, you know, that you're not kind of going a little wonky. Because that's what it is with crocheting. You have to double check everything. And like my starting numbers, I've double checked, triple checked, quadruple checked, and it's, I don't know, it is what it is. Nope, that's not in the right spot. See, even every now and then, I'll do it in the single crochet and not in the chain one space. My hook just doesn't go where it's supposed to. So for me today, it is turning out to be the perfect day to crochet. Um, it's a little cloudy outside and a little bit stormy. It's um, a bit windy. I don't see any rain yet, but it's a perfect day to sit and crochet. Or read a book, so I'll probably do that too. I just finished reading Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. And you know that Studio Ghibli made a movie of it, but the movie is, is quite a bit different from the book. And I read Howl's Moving Castle about two years ago based on a recommendation from a booktuber that I watch. And it has replaced my favorite book of all time because I absolutely loved it. It was so adorable. Now, it's written as, as middle grade, even though the two main characters, Sophie and Howl. Sophie is 17, 18 years old, and Howl is in his 20s. So, but it's not exactly young adult, but it's so magical and, and fantastical and it's so sweet and heartwarming that I needed a break from all the, the thrillers and the murder books and the horror books that I've been reading, you know, because it's October and it's spooky season. 
So I, um, it was a reread for me, and I just, I absolutely love Howl's Moving Castle. It is such a beautiful story. It's so well written. I loved it. Loved it. I said it in the past tense. I still love it. So then next up, I think what I'm going to be doing with my books is I'm going to be doing um, the Murderbot Diaries by uh, Martha Wells. It's called, the first book is called All Systems Red, and they're novellas, okay? And it's about um, a security unit. It's like an android robot type thing that is sentient. It's artificial intelligence. It grows and it learns, and it's, it's set in outer space, and I love books set in space. I love sci-fi in space. It's one of my favorite things, but they're novellas, so they're nice and short and easy reads, and I did read the whole series, but I found it on um, audiobook and I, in my um, one of my reading apps from the library, so that might be a thing I'll do today. Maybe while I'm crocheting and working on this, not in front of the camera, I'll sit and listen to an audiobook today. Okay, so also with this pink that I'm using, the ball of yarn is about 4.5 ounces. Now off the top of my head, I don't know how that translates into meters and yards and grams. I don't know. I don't have the label in front of me, but I am working all 4.5 ounces of yarn. I am going to keep going until I have a big chunky block of color, okay? If I run out of this pink in the middle of a row, I will rip those stitches out back to the beginning. Okay, if I'm so close to the end of the row and I've only got 10 stitches to go and I don't have enough to make it, I will rip out that whole row. So you're going to say, how many rows are we doing? It depends because every ball of yarn is a little bit different. Everybody's crochet technique is a little bit different. Um, I'm hoping to get 15 rows out of it. If you have a bigger ball of yarn, you will get more rows out of it. And you can stop anytime you want. Now, I'm up to my stitch marker. That marked the chain one for me. You can do 10 rows of color. You can do two rows of color. I'm leaving that up to you because not everybody likes those big chunky blocks of color. If you do, yay, aim for 15 to 22 rows, okay? That's what I did with the pink and white blanket. I would like to see this done in just like maybe two rows of color and then changing it every two rows, every three rows to make it more of a stripey look. But I don't have time for that right now and I don't have the patience for that right now. All right, so I'm getting to the end of the row. And there is my last single crochet. And then I'm going to chain two, I'm going to turn, and I'm going to go do it again. All right, so for me, it's about 11.30 in the morning. I am going to turn the camera off. You guys go ahead and crochet as much as you possibly can or want to. Um, and then I will come back in about an hour to show you what it looks like. Hopefully, I'll have five or six more rows done, okay? All right, I'll see you guys in a bit. Hey, guys, future me, before we even start the video, at some point, my stitch count gets off in this, okay? On paper and with Google Docs and Excel, 151 is the number, okay? Um, so, like, stitch number 151 should be the single crochet. Stitch number one is a single crochet. 150 is a skip. Number two is a skip. 149. And number three is spider stitch, okay? More than likely when I'm skipping one stitch, I might be skipping two. And I think that's what happened to my stitch count. So you'll see me and I'll be frustrated with myself and I'll be like, I can't put this on the internet. So this is just me an hour later coming to give you guys, I, I, my, my count's right, but my crocheting is wrong. <laughs> and that's how it usually works for me. So... Here you go. 
to the video and I will see you guys at the end. So do you guys want to hear something funny? I screwed up my own pattern. So I sat down because I was frustrated and I worked up a chain the first row of single crochets and the second row, which is where we start with the spider stitch, and I did it again. And it came out perfectly perfect. There should be 74 spider stitches in your row three, which is your first row of spider stitches. There should be 74. With the help of my husband and Google Cheats, not Docs. I think I called it Docs earlier, which is what I typically do. Um, I've got 75 which means I have one extra, which means I didn't skip a stitch somewhere along the line. So I've only got one, two, three, four, five rows of spider stitching done. I'm tearing this out. I'm going back to that first original row of spider stitches to find out where I added an extra stitch. Is it a pain in the neck? Yes. Am I frustrated with myself? Yes, because I sit here and act like I know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm always full of mistakes. And normally I will fudge it and make it work anyway. But just this one time, just this one time, I'm gonna get over myself and I'm going to fix it. So I'm tearing this out. Okay. When I find where I made that mistake, I will come back and I will show you guys, okay? Okay, I found it. My mistake. Now, could I leave it in there and still have a blanket that's still perfectly fine? Yeah, but I'm on the internet and I want this to be perfect for you guys. So I, I ripped it all out and sure enough, here's the beginning of the row, right? And I'm only about, what, a quarter of the way in and right here, I had skipped a stitch, I had skipped this one, and I had done a spider stitch here. I know it's not focusing, but then I did a spider stitch here right next to it. So I wound up with two right next to each other. So even though crocheting for 40 plus years, even I can still screw up and make a mistake and try and go back and fix it. So I'm gonna sit and fix this. <laughs> Oh my goodness. You guys, this is so hard sometimes. I wonder if it was when I had gone behind the camera to show you guys how to do the spider stitch. Probably. And then a lot of times when I do my first couple rows, I actually wear my reading glasses because my eyesight for up close is no longer any good. So I'm wondering without my reading glasses on that I just couldn't see the stitches properly. <clears throat> so I'm fixing this so the chain of 151 is right and then doing two more chains and then working 151 single crochets chain two and turn and do a single crochet in the first stitch and then a spider stitch in you skip one and then do a spider stitch skip one do a spider stitch skip one do a spider stitch until the end when you skip one and then do a single crochet. Chain two and turn and do a single crochet in the first single crochet. And then do a spider stitch in each chain one space all the way across. And you should have 74 spider stitches. Unless you're like me and you like to screw it up every which way from Sunday. <sighs> My goodness. I should label this what not to do during a crochet along, huh? Oh yeah, I know the lighting, I know. The sun, it comes, it goes. So yeah, I'm just sitting here working this and fixing it and watching what I'm doing. So I'm gonna do a second video tomorrow. 
that won't be as chaotic as this one. I will talk through the pattern again, make sure we've all got it, and just sit and relax and do these rows in a nice relaxing manner. Maybe some classical music on in the background because hopefully YouTube won't yell at me for copywriting Tchaikovsky or something, you know? Oh, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to blame it on my blood sugar, okay? Because I have type 2 diabetes. I take blood sugar medicine in the morning and then I didn't eat. So let's blame it on my blood sugar as to why I got that all wrong. I have since had some water. I had a breakfast sandwich, croissant with sausage and egg, no cheese. I don't like cheese. Wow. I like cheese on pizza. So how's that for the first video of our spider stitch blanket crochet along? And I go and mess it up. So don't do what I did, kids. So I got another question for you. According to YouTube and my analytics, which is just telling me things about my channel that I don't know, like the average age group that watches my videos, it's kind of up there. It's in the people who are in their 50s and 60s, okay? So I'm not asking you to tell me how old you are, but I'm asking you, do you do Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter? Do you guys do any of those? Because I'm trying to figure out another place where we can all interact with one another. Besides down in the comments of my videos. Now me, I do Instagram, but with my book channel, it's Jenny Larkin is Bookbound. And I um, occasionally put up my crocheted blankets. So I was thinking about making a second Instagram account with Granny Square Peg. Oh, there we go. I think I finally got that right. I think after this, I might take a little bit of a break, rest my hands, do another row, and then get all this footage out of the camera into the computer. If I can get it uploaded for you. And just two stitches left. My single crochet goes right in there. Oh, I got it. Okay, so crochet crocheting can be very forgiving. You can add extra, take some extras away. It, it can be very forgiving. Um, at the same time, learn to forgive yourself for messing it up and realizing that we all make mistakes. It's, it, it's not, you can't always get it perfectly perfect the first time around. It's okay to um, go back and take it all out and count again and do it again. Okay. So yeah. God, guys, what am I going to do? <laughs> um, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to, because I, I have a, well, let's show you my yarn. So this is what it looks like on the couch. So I have to work and use all this up because if I don't, it'll get all knotted and then the cats will want to get into it. So I'm going to sit and crochet for a while. Oh, that lighting. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna crochet for a little bit and so I don't have to worry about the cats playing in the yarn. Um, I will come back, say goodbye, then go to my room and cry. No, not really, I'm all right. I'm all right, I'm okay. I'm okay, I'll be back in a little bit.
It's two o'clock in the afternoon. I did fix this. This is where I'm at. I'm, I'm, I think I'm done. <laughs> I think I'm done for the day. So remember, we're basing it off of this pink and white one that I made a couple years ago that I did a video on about two or three months ago. So this is the start. I fixed my mistake. That is my very chaotic world of crocheting. Um, this is something that I do often um, by making mistakes and messing it up. I do that often. <laughs> it's just I don't ever tell anybody about it, but here I am on the internet. Okay, so yeah, um, my hands are, are getting crampy and, and I'm done um, for today. So let's call it quits here. Hopefully you guys did better than I did. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Uh, uh, part one of the Spider Stitch Crochet Along by Jenny at Granny Square Peg is done. We're done for today. I'm done for today. I'm going to come back tomorrow and the video will be nice and quiet and relaxed and peaceful. Okay. And we'll do some more crocheting tomorrow. All right. Um, I will catch you guys later. Bye.